David Bonson is the chief investment officer over at the Bonson Group, here to tell us why now might be the time to explore other investment options. All right, why, why the cold water here? Well, the notion of the earnings growing 100% year over year was projected a year ago, nine months ago, six months ago, and three months ago. That's all been known and priced into the very high multiple at that time. There's absolutely no question that the company has performed remarkably well and that the outstanding financial metrics of revenue growth and earnings growth have been noteworthy. The question is entirely for people buying the stock, whether or not that's priced in. Are they paying for a company that already has that known? And it's very obviously known because 66 analysts have said so, and we're sitting here talking about it now. 70 times earnings with 100% earnings growth priced in, there's absolutely no margin for error. And on a go-forward basis, there's no doubt that there will end up being some snafu, some revenue hiccup, some margin compression but what? Uh, that but will throw a lot of water gonna, on this party. Where do you think that's going to be derivative of? Because, I mean, otherwise, as of right now, we, we could have said these are going to be tough comps to continue to try and deliver to the street three quarters ago. Well, three quarters ago, there wouldn't have been much of a reason to think that was imminent. The issue is all entirely about the appetite from the investing public to pay up for it. That part I couldn't time and couldn't dare to guess. I think the analogy here to 1999 Cisco is almost perfect because Cisco never did run into a snafu. There never was a point at which revenue tanked, earnings tanked. They performed remarkably well. The problem is, 25 years later, the stock is still nowhere near where it was in that bubble valuation. NVIDIA faces the same thing. They're going to perform very well. It's just you're paying 70 times earnings for it. So when is the right time for investors to sell this stock? About a month ago, two months ago, today, tomorrow, they don't have to sell all of it. I don't. We, I, my position is just simply for us as more value-oriented investors and dividend growth investors to just simply point out that people are paying for perfection. And what the investment thesis is at this point has nothing to do with NVIDIA. It has to do with other investors. You're buying NVIDIA, banking on there being another investor who's a bigger sucker than you are. It's called greater fool theory. That can go on for a long time. People can make a lot of money doing that. I just am not any good at it, and I don't think very many people are either. But that's really yeah. what the investment thesis in NVIDIA is right now, is praying that someone else will pay up more than you do. What's tough for me about your thesis, David, is that the math is so there for NVIDIA. I want to take a listen to something that Sundar Pichai of Microsoft said over the past couple of months with regards to Microsoft's expenditure on AI and get your response to it. No, I think, to, you know, the one way I think about it is in, when we go through a curve like this, uh, you know, the risk of underinvesting is dramatically greater than the risk of overinvesting for us here. So Microsoft and some of the other hyperscalers make up 40 percent of NVIDIA's yeah. revenue. If we are continuing to hear from those executives that they're increasing CapEx on AI, which right now means NVIDIA because there's not enough competition, how can you maintain a bearish stance? That's why I maintain a bearish stance. That's one of the most bearish things I've ever heard. 40% is from one or two companies. And how has Microsoft done over the last four to six weeks? But it's the biggest companies in the world, weeks? and they're going to continue Microsoft to just got done saying that they are lowering those expenditures going forward. You, what you have right now is a vicious cycle where Microsoft is going up because they're buying a lot from NVIDIA, and NVIDIA is going up because Microsoft's buying a lot from them. It doesn't seem like a particularly logical conclusion that they can both feed off each other that way in perpetuity. When the market decides that that system is unsustainable, I have no idea. I wouldn't dare try to time it. But the idea that there is, without this great return on that invested capital, Microsoft will continue growing those expenditures quarter over quarter. Um, all one has to do is look at Microsoft's call from five weeks ago, and they can see that there is no possibility that that's going to continue. That was not my takeaway from Sundar's soundbite there. But putting that aside, can you tell me something in the math and the numbers that tells you that there's a bearish story being ignored by the market for it? Yes, it's called the multiple. It's called the P.E. ratio. That's the math. 70 times earnings. It doesn't end well. History is our guide here. Even if you have NVIDIA able to grow into the multiples that the market has assessed, how long do you believe that would take from your estimation? Well, for them to do that, let's be clear, at a $3 trillion market cap, 
that um, they have to grow the size of the entire 7-Eleven company to go up 1%. 1%. For this uh, to continue, just based on organic growth, they have to now move the needle by hundreds of billions of dollars to get just a basic market return. And so that's the problem. This is not uh, uh, me bashing on NVIDIA. This is a success story. I'm commenting on the valuation that when you start paying to those prices, the risk reward skew becomes very unattractive. But the fundamentals of revenues and earnings are not the problem. The problem is that that's already priced in and known by everybody. And the, obviously the analysts on the street are not gonna get caught with a sell or hold rating on Nvidia. It's very bad career risk for them. So for an investor to want to hold a small piece of it and pray that a 70 times company goes to 80 times, they could do that. And I don't think they're going to get hurt real badly to make it a small piece of their portfolio. Mm -hmm. But as you pointed out earlier, it's 6% of the index. Mm -hmm. Tech has become 31% of the index. And with communication services, 40% of the index. It's more top weighted than it was in 1999. It's not going to hold. I, I appreciate that you've got the stomach for it, David, when the rest of the street doesn't necessarily. But we got to end on a stock that you are a little bit more positive about, and that is Broadcom. I want to look at a chart here showing the EPS contribution of NVIDIA versus Broadcom on our screen. And there you can see the difference in the stock performance with NVIDIA soaring above Broadcom in terms of the fundamentals here. That's some data from strategists. But I'm, I'm curious how you maintain the bullish perspective on Broadcom, given that NVIDIA is already taking up so much space in the room? Well, Broadcom to me is not about uh, the AI chip story. It happens to be up about 500% since we bought it, largely because of AI, but it's a free cash flow growth story. Um, so I, we, it's a very low weighting for us now. Like I said, we've made 500% on it. And Broadcom was not an AI chip maker prior to this story as much as a kind of roll up of a whole lot of different names in the manufacturing side of semis. And they're a dividend grower uh, because the stock has grown so much. The yield has gotten to be very low. So we maintain a very low weighting and we're waiting to see what they do a dividend policy going forward. NVIDIA has managed to pay out a 0.4% dividend yield with one of the most profitable companies in human history. Uh, ultimately, all of these big tech companies that have grown through the sky, uh, I mean, Broadcom's returns kind of speak for themselves, they uh, end up having to return cash to shareholders or they set money on fire. Yeah, it's interesting, especially coming off of their most recent earnings call, Broadcom talking about as the strong demand from hyperscalers for both AI networking and custom, er, custom accelerators, it's interesting to note that as that AI data center clusters continue to deploy, their revenue mix is actually shifting even more towards an increasing proportion of networking. So we'll see what they continue to put forward and uh, communicate to the street here. David Bonson, who is the chief investment officer at the Bonson Group, 